Okay, welcome to another Ginger Math Petition video, helping you with your maths, your chess, and your general fitness. All right, let's get started. So we are going to calculate with two different methods here how to work out a gradient. And a gradient is just a very mathematical name for a slope or how steep a line is. Now the general formula for this is rise over run, but I'm going to show you the two different ways we can approach this. So we're going to start with our line here, so 2, 0, and 5, 6, and we're going to use a geometric way of working it out first of all. So the first thing we need to do is make a right angle triangle from the two endpoints, the start point and the end point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a vertical line downwards, I'm going to draw a horizontal line across until it makes a right angle triangle. And what I do here is I find out the height of the triangle and then the width of the triangle as well. So if we take the height, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is going to be 6. And as we go across, we go 1, 2, 3. So this is going to be 3. So the way we calculate the gradient is we do the rise divided by the run. So the rise of this is 6. So we're going 6 upwards. And then we divide by the run. So the width here is 3. And then we get our answer of 2. Because we have an upward sloping line, we should have a positive gradient, which is what we get here. Fantastic. OK, I'm going to show you now the second method of doing the same question. So we have our coordinates 2, 0 and 5, 6. Another way that we can calculate the gradients is this formula here, which is known as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. OK, and you're thinking, well, where do these random y2s and x1s come from? Well, we label our coordinates. So this is our first coordinate. So this is x1, the x-coordinate of the first coordinate. This is the y-coordinate of the first coordinate here. This will then be x2. Okay, it's the x part of the second coordinate. And this is y2, which is the y part of the second coordinate. At this point, we substitute, so we replace the y2 with 6 minus, we replace the y1 with 0, we replace the x2 with 5, and we replace the x1 with 2. And if we calculate this out, well, 6 minus 0 is 6, 5 minus 2 is equal to 3, 3, and we get our answer of 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. And we have the same answer as the previous method we did. Perfect. And if you're liking the content that you're watching currently, then please do consider liking and subscribing and sharing with your friends as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we're going to do exactly the same two methods we did, but this time for this line here. So we're going to look at this example instead. So again, we draw our right angle triangle. So we're going to this time drop downwards. And you're probably thinking, well, can't I do a triangle here? It works in exactly the same way. So that's absolutely fine. And we do our horizontal and vertical lines until we make a right angle like so. And again, we just count the squares going upwards and across. So here we go one, two, three. So that's going to be 3, and this one is going to go a long way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this is going to be 9. So to work out the gradient here, what we need to do, we do our rise over run. So our rise is 3, the height is 3, and divided by the run, which is 9. And if we simplify our fraction, we get 1 over 3. The last thing we have to notice here is that the line is downward sloping. So we need to put a minus in front of our gradient to indicate it's going downwards. OK, and now what we're going to do 
is use the same method we looked at before, so our formula for the same question we just did. A reminder, the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We label our coordinates, so this is the x part of our first coordinate, this is the y part of our first coordinate, this is the x part of our second coordinate, and this is the y part of our second coordinate. It doesn't matter if you do it the other way around, you'll still get to the same answer. So let's substitute this in. y2 is equal to 4, y1 is equal to 7, and then x2 is equal to 10, and then finally x1 is equal to 1. And if we work this out, we get 4 minus 7 is equal to minus 3, careful with negative numbers. 10 minus 1 is equal to 9. If we simplify our fraction, we get minus 1 over 3, which is the same as minus a third, which is the same as the answer that we did using the first method. Okay, absolutely perfect. Okay, so now it's your turn. So I've got six questions up on there. You can use either method, so you can either use the method by using the diagram, or you can use the formula, you'll get to the same answer. So pause the video, give yourself yeah, 10 minutes or so, and see if you can work out the answers to the six questions you see here. Okay, hopefully you paused the video, so I'm just going to give you the answers now. So the first one's equal to 2, the second one is equal to 4.5 or 9 over 2, next one is equal to a half, next one's equal to minus 2, next one's a third, and the last one's equal to minus 1. Hopefully you got those answers, hopefully this is now making much more sense. Again, before I finish, please like and please subscribe. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. Okay, bye-bye for now.